Hello everyone and welcome to Antique and Garden Showcase. I'm Mark and today we're going to look at a chair that I bought last year. And I bought this chair um, to actually finish up my uh, final paper to become an appraiser. And this was a piece that I chose at auction uh, to write my paper on. I purchased the piece. I kind of dissected the piece, tried to find out as much as I could about it. And when I took the upholstery off of this chair, which was actually a needle point, the needle point had ripped and the uh, woven portion, uh, the banding underneath had given way. It had dry rotted to the point that you could almost just peel it apart like a piece of paper. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take that old seat frame, which I have right here. Here's the old seat frame. And we're going to take a three and a half inch webbing and we're going to replace the three and a half inch webbing on this seat. And we're going to do that by going, we're going to crisscross the seat and the original webbing actually had uh, thumbtacks, well not thumbtacks, but they were like uh, carpet tacks in there. And one thing I did not like about that was, you know, this is a woven material and those tacks kind of pulled through that woven material. And whenever the center of this chair was taken apart, it was all a horsehair material. That's what they had stuffed it with. And that horsehair was full of tacks. So if anyone sat down on this chair, they probably got the thrill of a lifetime. So we don't want that to happen anymore. So in order to keep this from pulling through, I'm going to use staples instead of um, the carpet tacks on here. So a little bit of the history about the chair, and then we'll get to work on replacing uh, this chair bottom. I found the chair at an historic estate auction locally in my town. It's an unusual home that had three parlors. You entered the front door through a parlor, then there was a parlor to the left and another parlor in the back. The chair was in the third parlor and used as a sitting chair, even though its original purpose is a desk chair. The chair is a blending of Heppel White and Adam Styles, and it's believed to be English around 1865 to 1885, made out of mahogany. It was covered with a needle point that was ripped. Inside the needle point was horse hair and a menagerie of tacks and broken things. So today we're going to put a new covering on that seat. I've got one of these already put on, but before I start that, I want to tell you what I'm using. I'm using a 3 8 inch staple to put the initial one down. And then when we fold this over in the end, I'll go back and put a 9 16 staple in there. So what we want to do here is I've got the next piece cut ready to go. You want to cut it to length of the frame from one side to the other. You want to shoot your staple in the middle, in the middle of the wood. You want to be in that track. You don't want to get too close to the edge because then you'll uh, split your wood out and then you've got a whole new disaster to have to take care of. So we're going to try to get this one as close, but leaving a slight gap between. So this is what we're shooting for, just a little bit of a gap, because we're going to have to come back and weave through from the other side as well. So I'm going to put this one on and then we'll speed through the rest of these and then we'll get to the woven portion. tight on this end and get that as tight as possible and we'll pull and staple on this end place but like I said I'm going to wait till the end and then I'm going to fold these over this is the way the original chair was put together 
So I'm gonna fold those over and then staple through. I don't wanna wait till we're done just to make sure there's no other adjustments that need to be done here. This is what we're going to do because I'm actually running short on this and I may be able to get three bands the other way. So let me see if we can go a little bit farther from the edge there. This is a famous first for me, so we'll see how this turns out. But uh, I think this is going to work okay. This back side had some really tough oak wood in it and it made for difficult um, stapling at least the second time around the first time around went in really good what I did was I just took the hammer and just kind of flattened these out just as long as they're flat and secure that's all that's gonna matter but I am gonna pull this one out that malfunctioned on this side because I don't want that in there I don't want another tack situation like we had before that's for sure Turn it back and hit this one again, so we can do a little better with it. That one's just really tough right there. Okay, so for the most part, we have a finished uh, woven seat in here. And this is the way the original was done. It was uh, stapled or nailed in and then it was, the flap was put over and then another row of uh, staples or fasteners put in there. And now this is all going to get covered over by padding so you won't see any of this. But they did do this on the top side. So the bottom side is going to look like that. Nice and clean on the bottom. But the padding will take care of any of the ridges and things that are on here on the top. So next we're going to do the padding of the seat. This is a one inch poly foam that I'm going to use to cover the top. Got a trusty Sharpie marker here. And we're going to lay this on top of the poly foam. I'm gonna to try to get it in a corner. Use as little as I can. Just right edge to edge on this because I've got a, um, let me show you real quick. got an old needle point that's going to be covering this piece so uh, I don't want it too thick because I don't have much room for this to overlap the edges so this is what's going to be going on the chair uh, as a covering for that but first let's go ahead and take our sharpie I'm just going to lightly trace on the polyfoam And then we'll take just some regular scissors, lay this off, and we'll cut this polyfoam. As you can see, we have the layout of the chair there on it with the Sharpie. We'll just take our scissors and cut this right out. So that's ready for uh, the covering now. So we'll look at that next. 
So when we talk about the least favorite part of my project, this is it. Um, doing the finish is always the uh, best looking part, but it's oftentimes the most difficult. The thing is you want to get your pattern lined up in the center of the seat. Also, you want to make sure you have enough to cover the edges so you don't have any gaps hanging out on either side of the seat. So uh, you really have to kind of mess with this and get it in place beforehand, which is what I've already done. On the back, I've already done a double fold on here and I've already stapled this portion down to kind of hold it in place. So now we're going to look at doing the front and the sides. I think I'm going to start with the front first. You want to make sure you have your covering pulled down to where it is at the wooden rail area because if you don't then you're going to have um, part of the uh, needle point when it's stitched to showing you don't want that part showing at all. perfect fit on this. I really like the way that the uh, material goes with this chair. The darker color is going to look really good in an office if this is used as a desk chair. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching Antique and Garden Showcase. Don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll have more stuff coming out really soon. Thanks again for watching, and visit us on Facebook and my webpage. page.